Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Settle down, please. So I have exciting news. I'm sure you read the title. I was successfully able to breed my Abronia graminia, which is kind of a big deal, at least for me. I'm very happy about it, very excited, because it's not something that a ton of people have been able to do successfully. And I wanna talk more about the Abronia graminia, but also just what I've done as far as their care and trying to get them to breed over the years and what I think has led to my success. And of course, I also wanna show you guys the babies. I first got my Abronias in, I think 2017. I believe I got them about four years ago, four or five years ago-ish, four and a half. That's besides the point. Back then, I mean, still now, but back then especially, there were hardly any people breeding these animals in captivity. So if you saw one for sale, chances are it was wild caught. Now I have mixed opinions about wild caught animals. I'm sure everyone does. My moral justification for keeping a wild caught animal is that it's okay if you're breeding that animal and trying to increase a captive bred population of an animal that isn't typically captive bred. I think if you're doing that, then that kind of justifies keeping a wild caught animal because you are contributing to increasing a captive population and giving people the option to get that animal if they want to captive bred. So my goal from the start was to breed them. That was a bit of a bold goal that I was setting myself because again, this is an animal that not a ton of people have a lot of success breeding in captivity, and with a lot of reptiles, it's really easy to breed them. You just put them together, and they they lock up, they breed, and everything is good and easy. You don't really have to do a whole lot, but with some reptiles, you have to do certain things to mimic nature where they come from, because maybe a certain season will typically be a breeding season and a lot of the time there's some sort of fluctuation in temperature or humidity or whatever it may be will trigger like a breeding behavior in an animal. So for certain animals, there's very specific things you need to do to get them to breed. Abronias being one of them. They're not one of those things that you just put together and magic happens. You really have to work for it and that's something that people keeping Abronias in captivity are still kind of in the process of figuring out, I think, and I think we're pretty much there or getting there and that's figuring out what is it that makes these guys reproduce like what do you have to do to get them to breed in captivity for whatever reason i was like i think i can do it so i tried i bought a pair i kept them together and i tried different things to try to get them to breed um without any success for years until this year and there are a couple changes that I made. I was initially keeping them in a screen cage all year round. I would keep them outside in the spring, summer, and fall. I live in Michigan, so I kept them outside as long as I could, but it does get to a point where it's too cold. Now, Abronias can withstand a lot more cold than a lot of reptiles. They can go as low as about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, so I pretty much kept them outside until the nighttime temperature got too cold and then I would bring them inside and just keep them in my animal room and I would keep them in the screen cage, just had them on a mister that was going off all the time and using a fogger and everything I could to just keep humidity in there as best as possible, but it was very difficult. Once I started to see that more people were starting to experiment with glass enclosures, I was like, I also want to experiment with that because I thought that if the ventilation thing wasn't an issue, it would be beneficial for me to keep them in a glass enclosure so that the humidity would actually stay in. I switched them into a glass enclosure for when they're inside, and I still kept them in a screen enclosure outside. So that was the first change I made recently that I mean, technically it could have affected something, I don't know, but there's a different change I made that I think played a bigger role in getting them to finally reproduce, and that was actually lowering their temperature for all winter. Now that's not something that I normally did because like I said, I used to keep them in my animal room. My animal room is like 80 degrees at all times because of all the heat that's running in there. It just stays naturally a warm temperature. That's fine for the Abronias, but it's not really gonna be as natural for them because there isn't going to be a dip in temperature throughout the winter. This time around what I did, 
And I couldn't do this at my old house because at my old house, I didn't really have anywhere cold to put them. But at this house, the basement stays pretty cool. So basically after it was too cold outside, I moved them into my basement in their glass enclosure. My basement temperature is in the 60s, so it's not quite as cool as I would want to keep them. Like ideally, I'd want to keep them in the very low 60s or upper 50s probably. But like I said, I don't have a ton of control over that. All throughout the winter and early spring, they were in my basement, kept at probably like around 65 degrees. Thing that's really kind of strange that happened is I ended up seeing them locked up, I thought, in the spring. Now, I saw them in a cork round and I saw the male on top of the female kind of biting her head, which in lizard, that means they're getting it on, but I didn't technically see, I didn't see it in there, you know? Sometimes things try to reproduce, but they just don't quite make it. So I was hopeful that they were locked up properly and did their thing, but I didn't see very clearly because again, they were in a cork round. It's strange that they would do that in the springtime because typically the spring, summer is around when they're giving birth and they're usually locking up like in the fall, winter-ish. I was like, whatever, I'll take what I can get, not complaining, you know? So I went about everything as I normally would. Once it was warm enough outside, I put them outside. Business carried on as usual. I was just hoping that I would see her start to grow and get fat and be pregnant, you know? That's what you wanna see. So come around September-ish, I notice she's getting pretty fat. I don't really feel like I'm feeding her enough to justify her just being obese. So I was like, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure she's gravid. I was still skeptical because I was like, I like, why would I be one of the few people who can successfully breed a brony? Like it doesn't even really make sense to me. So I was like, maybe she's just fat. I don't know. Again, it got to the point where late October started rolling around and it was getting too cold to keep them outside. So again, I brought them in, put them in their glass tank in the basement. I was checking her like every day. I was like, one day I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna find babies all over the enclosure. I was so excited. And then one day, I came downstairs, I saw a baby, and I was like, nice. I'm very excited about this. So when I first came down to check on them, I noticed the female was out basking and she looks, she looked deflated to say the least. Like she was very full and now she's very, she's a skinny legend now. So I was like, that's pretty sus. And then I looked over here and I was like, there's a baby. And then I looked over here, I was like, oh my God, like that one was right in front of my face. That is another baby. Please focus on this child. Okay, I don't know why it doesn't want to focus on this bitch. He's looking at me now. Hey, bestie. And there's also one on the screen up there, just saw. Wow, not focusing. That's crazy. It is not immaculate. That's all right. Put them in. They're so pretty. Away. Yep. So you have one. For anyone who isn't familiar with abronias, they are viviparous, meaning they do give live birth, so they don't lay eggs. Pulled everything out of the enclosure. They're teeny tiny, and the babies also are not bright green like the adults are. I found three babies, which is a pretty small, is it called a litter if it's, you know, live birth, but a reptile, is it still called a litter? It doesn't sound right, but it probably is, I'm assuming. So she had a litter, of three babies, which is pretty small. We can have litters of typically, I believe around 10. There have been cases where they've had litters of just three. A lot of times on the lower end, it's usually around five, I believe. I was a little bit disappointed to only find three babies because I was hoping for like 10, but there was only three. And 
although that was a little bit disappointing, I was still very excited and stoked. And I was like, even like one, I would be happy with one even. Being able to produce any is incredible. So I was really happy to even just find three of them. And I was kind of hoping that maybe I would find more, like maybe she wasn't done giving birth, but I never found more of them. I was trying to think of why she had such a small litter. It could have literally just been because it was her first time, but there's also other things that could have played a role. Like it could have also had to do with the fact that they didn't actually lock up during the time that they normally should. So then maybe the temperatures of when the eggs were like incubating inside of her, maybe that kind of threw it off or something. Yeah, it's hard to say. Potentially if I see them lock up again around the same time, if it's weird, maybe I'll try to keep them cooler or at least keep the female cooler while she's like producing the babies since normally it would be cool for them. It's hard to say, I don't know. But I've also been in contact with a few other people who have had success with breeding abronias and the general consensus that I've found is that you wanna cool them in the winter. Even if you can just get them down into the 60s, I think that that can be enough to get them to finally lock up. Another thing I've heard people say is that they'll separate the male and female and put them together when it's time for them to breed. And I have tried separating them and putting them back together in the past before I knew to cool them. And this time that they just so happened to pair, I didn't separate them. Another thing could be maybe I need to have them separated and then just put them together when I want them to breed and maybe that'll also help. But that's definitely something I would try if you haven't had success so far. But it just so happened that the time I did have success, I didn't separate them first and it still worked with just the cooling thing. But yeah, basically, I'm just really excited to have produced three baby abronias. Another thing I heard from several people is that the baby abronia are extremely difficult to care for because they're just very fragile, very sensitive. They're just so much more sensitive to everything than an adult because of how small they are. You need to make sure they have the right amount of humidity at all times because if it dries out completely in there that can be detrimental they're also very sensitive to heat like you cannot have their enclosure getting too hot and even keeping all of those things in mind a lot of people usually end up having babies die that makes me really nervous because again i only have three babies so if some of them die it's like i'm not gonna be left with anything or not very much at least. I can only hope that I'll get them to lock up again and hopefully next time they'll have a larger litter. For now there's three babies. I just gotta keep a close eye on them. I'm feeding them every single day. They need to just be constantly eating and have access to food so that they can grow and establish themselves. Because they're so small, I've been feeding them fruit flies, which they've been eating really well. That's basically it for the update. I just wanted to let you guys here on YouTube know that my abronias were able to reproduce successfully. I'm really happy about it, and hopefully I can get them to do it again, and hopefully we can watch them grow, and it'll be fun to see how their colors change over time, how they kind of turn into the green color, and just Watching them get bigger, it's really exciting. They're so small and cute. Yeah, I hope you guys found this interesting or helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. All that stuff is in the description below. And we'll see you guys in my next video.